Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back to talk about 3D printed discs. I purchased four discs off of eBay, different discs, different sellers. I've never dealt with them before. I never owned these discs before. I wanted to conduct a load test and see how these discs would perform compared to the OEM discs and my discs in previous load tests. So, I put them through a load test. The video ended up being 75 minutes long. I, I babble <laughs> and fumble my way through testing each of these. I talk about all the attributes of 3D printing and infills and layers. I talk about the price of the discs and where I purchased them and so forth. Uh, I, I didn't want to subject all of you to that. So this is a summary video. I will put a link down below in the description and in a pinned comment so that you can watch that entire video if you want to see the actual test. Here I'm going to talk about my results and my impressions of these 3D printed parts. Okay, so four different discs, four different sellers, and they range from about $11.5 for this disc all the way on up to over $22 for this uh, disc. And they use a variety of materials. These, I suspect, are all different types of PLA, PETG. This, they claim, is a carbon fiber part. I'll talk more about that in a moment. So let's first look at the results of the test. Now, I did two different kinds of tests, I, same as I did for these in the past. I pulled and applied a force at the lip to try to snap or bend the, the lip of the disc. And then in a second test, I put a force on the face of the disc, applied a force here, and I tried to bend or break the face of the disc. And this is the result. Uh, you know, each of them did fail. Let's see when they failed. So this is disc one. Disc one lasted to about 184 pounds of force, which is very similar to uh, series two OEM. And on the face, it only took 54 pounds of force to fail. So this disc was about as strong as OEM on the lip, but it was uh, very weak on its face and failed pretty early. This disc performed better in both tests. So this was a uh, disc number two was strong enough to last till about 215 pounds of force and then 131 pounds of force on its face. It was actually the strongest of the four discs when a force was applied to its face. I suspect that that has to do with the fact that this is a very high fill rate. So this is a very solid disc. This seller does talk about reinforcing pins, but the only reinforcement on this entire disc is right here. And these lugs aren't really the things that break on these discs. Uh, I haven't encountered any with mine yet. The only time I've seen these break is on the dials, not the discs. So reinforcing these, I don't know what value that brings. The real reinforcement should have been in here and he would have gotten better performance out of this disc. The third disc, this was the strongest performing disc on the pull to break this uh, lip off. And again, it is a, an extremely solid printed disc. Uh, it lasted to a little over 300 pounds of force on the lip, but it failed uh, at 103 pounds when pressed on its face. So it's not a uh, very strong disc uh, in this direction. The poorest performing disc was this one. And it's also the most expensive disc. This one is sold as a carbon fiber part. Carbon fiber printed is not like carbon fiber parts that you would uh, buy for your car. Uh, the structural parts, body panels, suspension components, and so forth. Let me 
uh, explain quickly the difference between this and carbon fiber that you would uh, get as a, let's say, a, a, a body panel on a Ferrari. Traditional carbon fiber fabric is a woven fabric, right? They, they layer it, they put a resin into the fabric, they squeeze out as much resin as possible, leaving mostly fabric with a little bit of resin. Then they uh, vacuum degas to remove any kind of uh, air bubbles, air pockets, and then they autoclave it under uh, pressure and temperature in order to get that part to cure and be incredibly strong. And so, you know, uh, woven fabrics and even the relatively newer forged carbon fiber, which almost looks like uh, flakes of fiber that is pressure forged, these are incredibly strong. This is what, you know, you would find on, for example, a uh, modern day Lamborghini uh, with forged carbon or the more decorative and, and strong uh, body panels. This is what is inside a plastic filament that's used for 3D printing. And it is a chopped carbon fiber, uh, just like chopped fiberglass. It is strands of carbon fiber that have been chopped into tiny little pieces. This is actually a, a magnification of looking under a microscope at carbon fiber that has been chopped. But it's chopped, it's mixed in with plastic, and then it's used to print parts. So this, they can call it carbon fiber sort of, because it has some carbon fiber percentage of content, but it is not the same as the strength and performance of carbon fiber that you would find in you know high-end automobiles or racing or anything like that, okay? So don't mistake that for being a premium carbon fiber part. It's not the same. It's also the poorest performing of all four discs. The lip of this carbon fiber part came off at only 85 pounds of force and it cracked on its face at only 82 pounds of force. And you can see here that, you know, it, it was the poorest performing it, uh, with this test and it was the second poorest performing with this test. Is this worth the premium? Absolutely not. You know, you should not be paying $22, $23 per disc for a part that is not even performing as well as the $11.5 regular plastic part. Part of it is that when you buy these parts, you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know what kind of printer they're using, what kind of materials they're using, or you don't know how they're printing the part. In this case, you can see here, this part has a low infill rate, meaning it is not a solid part. It is filled with air pockets uh, because it is a lattice that they print in here. That saves on print time and it saves on print material. That saves them the cost. If you're printing a Pokemon figurine for your kid uh, to put on their desk, okay, sure. You can print using lower infill rates, uh, save on time, save on plastic. But when you're doing structural parts, don't skimp like that. So if you're printing these yourself, then do a high infill rate. Do 100% if you can uh, you know, uh, afford the time and the plastic. That's what this guy is doing. That's 100% infill on this uh, part. Same thing with this guy. That's a high infill rate. And of course they performed accordingly. They were uh, much stronger than these two. This one is a lower infill rate. You can see all the air pockets between the lattice. And this one was the worst of all, you know? So yeah, they, they're selling a premium cost part, but they're printing it in a way that is, uh, I would say, you know, cheaply and poorly printed for a structural component that you're going to rely on for your safety. And none of these uh, OEM or 3D printed compare, of course, to mine. 
you know, uh, I actually, the reason I put the little plus sign here is it, I don't know the maximum of my discs because my gauge maxes out at 500 pounds of force. So one of these days, if I can afford to get a stronger gauge, I'll test just to see when they actually break. But at the end of the day, I achieved my goal. When I created these, I wanted a part that was stronger and better than OEM. And I accomplished that because not only are they much stronger than OEM, but they're also stronger than any 3D parts right now that are currently on the market. Uh, these are the four that I was able to find. These four parts were the four I was able to find on uh, eBay from those different sellers. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, you know, be careful when you're buying 3D printed parts. Yeah, it feels like you're saving, but you're not really saving because one, uh, they're not really significantly different. And in some cases, they are actually weaker than the OEM parts. So you're better off buying OEM before you'd buy 3D printed. And they definitely don't compare to mine, despite the fact that my parts per disc cost less than parts like this. You know, when you're paying uh, $10 a disc for this and you're paying 12 to 14 or more dollars a disc here or $22 a disc here, this is a much better option. The only difference is that you can buy these one at a time and mine you have to buy as a set because they all, as you can see, kind of they're designed to work together as a uh, complete set. So that's it, guys. Uh, you know, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please uh, hit the subscribe button. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. And I will see you all in the next video.